These uh, three taikonauts, that's what uh, Chinese astronauts are called, are, are headed to the core module of China's future space station, where over the course of the next three months, they'll be conducting a number of tests, experiments, uh, to just to ensure the viability of, of this, uh, this project. And as part of these tests, they'll also, also be conducting two uh, spacewalks to, uh, to inspect the exterior of the core module of that space station, uh, from where everything will be controlled in, in that future Chinese space station. So, uh, this is just one step among many, and as, I, as, I, as you explained, and this started on April 29th when that core module was launched into space, and uh, then there's been a number of very quick successions of other stages, including a cargo shipment that was uh, sent uh, into space uh, just a month later to prepare uh, to provide supplies for this mission that we're seeing leave, um, leave the Earth uh, today. And this will be followed by another cargo shipment, and then in September there'll be a new crew of three Taikonauts that will be replacing the crew that's uh, been sent out this uh, this Thursday. Uh, and these uh, new uh, Taikonauts will be spending six months in uh, the Earth's orbit. Uh, and they'll, over the course of these six months and uh, over the course of 2022, they'll be overseeing uh, the, uh, the, the launch of two space labs that will be connected to the uh, core module of China's future space station. Uh, and that will be completed by the end of 2022. And then China will have a permanent presence in Earth's orbit and will be able to continue developing its uh, space program. And Charles, uh, China's space program, it has to be said, has been growing leaps and bounds in recent years. What's the wider plan here for China? That's right. Uh, Chinese uh, space missions have been making headlines around the world over the past few years. We saw it with uh, the landing of a rover on the dark side, on the far side of the moon, and then uh, that rover uh, being able to, to, to send back lunar samples to Earth. And obviously, uh, over the past few months, we've also seen China successfully send and land a rover on the surface of Mars. And um, there's, uh, there's a strong element here as well of, of national pride uh, for many people in China. China. It's it's a it's kind of a crowning achievement to see uh, China being a, a leading power in space exploration today. When just over 40 years ago, it was still in its early stages of economic development. Uh, but obviously, there's a huge um, there's a space race going on here, and a, and a race for technological uh, supremacy uh, between China and the United States. It's important to note that there is no uh, real cooperation between the space programs of these two countries, mostly uh, in part because uh, the U.S. has legislation against such cooperation. But, <clears throat> sorry, but more importantly, this is about China developing a form of technological self-sufficiency and, and self-reliance to be able to, to develop all these things without the help of any other country around the world.